This year, for the first time, although I've been on a Buddhist path for 38 years, I finally saw what a Bodhi tree leaf looks like. Even you in the back row can see that this is a very large leaf and it has a very long tail at the bottom, which makes it absolutely distinctive. In Thich Nhat Hanh's latest book, there are three of these gracing the cover, in case you don't know what a Bodhi, Bodhi tree leaf looks like. And I have a genuine leaf here for those of you who are so inclined. But the question is, what went on 2,500 years ago under the Bodhi tree. Here's a, here's a subject who had been on a six-year quest, six long, grueling, hard, rigorous years. What happened? In the pre-dawn hours, the Zen traditions would have us believe that he looked up, looked up, and was able to see the morning star, and that this was the triggering stimulus that set forth of the major enlightenment and awakening that followed. That's in the realm of conjecture. And this is in the realm of a plausible model for what might have happened. Because we can see over here the ups and downs of the egocentric and allocentric attentive process. And then right about the time when the egocentric processing was already on the way down, a sudden triggering stimulus comes in. Could be a visual stimulus. Could be the planet Venus in the eastern sky. It could be a, a, the call of a crow that Master Iq experienced when he was alone in a boat. In any event, the sudden enhancement of allocentric, other referential attentive processing occurs simultaneously with the acute dropping out of the sense of self. I'll close <clears throat> with this description of what it means to go into a non-dual mode of experiencing. Let's start up at the top with our usual hyper hypertrophied sense of self and our values that we place to a lesser degree on anything out there outside of our skin. We're the big cheese here, and that's what this big self indicates. And here we see a non-dual phase of unity in which there are no longer any distinctions between self and other. And coming out, at least in the immediate period from Kensho or awakening or this major peak experience of unity, there is a much smaller sense of self. And notice for the first time that there are these there are these porosities between the sense of self, which is in a diminution mode and the much larger appreciation of the natural world, of the environment outside. And in the days, weeks, and years thereafter, it's a lot easier to gain access to this greater sense of the other uh, in the world outside us. This is a very cavalier approach to the subject of self and how to go into selflessness, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you.